All right, so in the last video, we've gone through the process of getting here, where we got a piece of circuit board material coated in photoresist that we now need to put our mask on and then expose it, then we um, develop it, and then we go into etching. And up to this point, I've used my trusty Chinese EEPROM eraser that actually has a UV tube in it to expose all the um, circuit boards that I've been making for as a test for this. And we get to this here, which looks all right enough. Um, this is on a piece of steel because steel is cheaper than circuit board material, but I've also done one um, on proper PCB material. And although this is a little bit overexposed, it looks just fine. Um, with a little bit of optimization on this process, we could get this to work and make some proper double-sided circuit boards. And in fact, I did. Um, this works all right. So for the Z80 computer, we need relatively large boards though. And the tray on my EEPROM eraser is only about this big, which is not large enough to fit the Z80 board. So what we need is a larger UV exposure chamber of sorts. And I'd really like to use for this, I'd really like to use tubes like this. This is not the right kind of UV tube. You want the ones with the shorter wavelengths for this type of photoresist. And you can see those, uh, you can find those on the internet. And um, they're generally different from these in that they don't have a phosphor on the inside of the tube. They're just blank quartz tubes with mercury vapor inside. And they also not say UVA. Um, There's a 9 watt tube, by the way. But these, this form factor of tube is, I think, um, very good for the type of application I'm looking for. What I came up with is this, which is just a box, just a regular black plastic box of my printer. And then it has this lid here, which drops in like this and um, encloses everything. There is a couple of holes on there that I need to um, uh, glue shut because I uh, originally designed this a little different, but not to worry. So in this lid, this is where all the magic goes. Um, on this lid, we've got a choke for two 9 watt lamps and we've got two lamp holders. And these lamps will just drop in here, like so. And there's an aluminum foil backing that will um, reflect the light um, down into the chamber. So we get um, fairly uniform illumination all through the chamber. I'll probably also put aluminum foil over there, um, all in this box, um, just to get the exposure as uniform as I can make it. What this doesn't have yet is a timing circuit because what we want is we put our circuit board in there we close the lid push the button bam, and then it um, gives us exposure for a certain time and you can see here there's a hole for an LED which will tell us when the thing is on and when it's done irradiating the circuit board so let's go over the design for the timing circuit. So as you can see, the circuit diagram is roughly divided into two parts. The upper part here is the power supply and the lower part is the timer. And we'll start with the timer down here. As you can see, this is just a standard um, NE555 timer in a configuration where it basically acts as a one shot. You ground this point out to, well, ground, and then 
it will activate this relay for a certain amount of time before switching it off again. The time can be adjusted by this potentiometer here. And what this basically adjusts is the charging current for this capacitor here. And um, what we get is we have different charging times. So when this capacitor is discharged through here, we have different times until it um, passes the threshold here. And that gives us different timing um, that we can adjust with this. So this is all fairly straightforward. If you look at the power supply up here, you see this is also fairly easy. This is a classic capacitor dropper power supply. And I really don't like them, but uh, because of the lamps, we're going to have exposed mains all over the inside of the device when it's running anyway. So I didn't think it necessary to um, uh, isolate the timer circuit from the mains. What this means is that we have to um, insulate everything that the user could touch from the user. So this is why it has an insulated button on the outside and you're not supposed to open the device while it's connected to the wall at all. And this is also why all of these heads here, they get these little plastic caps on them. So you can't touch them and by that touch the underside of this aluminium foil here and by that connect to, I don't know, this um, choke and then connect yourself to the circuit somehow. Which would also, this would already um, imply that there's one fault in that something touched the inside of the case but um, it's better to be safe than sorry with these sorts of things. Also, the LED up here, and this is not shown on the circuit board, we're going to have an LED like this, which is an RGB LED, and we're going to hook it up in a way, um, just put it down here, we have an RGB LED, and we're going to hook it up in a way that it's one color when the thing is plugged into the wall, and another color when it's running. So, um, for example, we could make it, uh, we could have red when it's plugged into the wall. And then when the relay is activated, we also light up the, uh, the green LED here. And then we get a mixture of red and green when it's running and red when it's plugged into the wall. So you can always see that the thing is plugged in because the light is on. And then you don't open it and touch it on the inside. And that is, I think, a okay enough um, solution for this. Uh, another way of doing that would be to have a lockout on here, a lockout switch, that if you open the box, it would just disconnect the mains. But I think this is all right. I'm the only one that's going to be using this. And I'm, um, I'm perfectly able to unplug it if I see the light is on. That I think I can do. So let's go over the capacitive power supply. We've got our mains coming in here, going through a 200 milliamp fuse, going through a capacitor with associated resistor, going through a brick rectifier, charging up this 47 microfarad um, 400 volt capacitor then going through a 10k resistor into a Zener diode, charging up this 1000 microfarad at 32 volt. And this is an 18 volt Zener because this relay is um, 18 volts. And that is just about it. So let's look at the circuit board for this. It's also relatively easy. We see our Oh, there's an error on the schematic. This is a 2.2, not a 0.22. It's a relatively large capacitor. And it still has one of the mounting screws here. So this is the potentiometer where you would adjust the um, time for it to run. 
Here's the fuse holder. There's the 555, the relay and the dropper resistor here. This is going to be mounted on this thing like this. So it sits on here in the center. But this is going to get a cover over it, a plastic cover, so that even if you would forget to unplug it and you somehow fail to notice the light that's glowing that tells you that the thing is on, you still couldn't touch the circuit board. And if you can't touch the circuit board, everything else is basically insulated. All right, here we have the thing all assembled now. The power is coming in through this cord here, coming through the handle down here through strain relief up there. You can see the LED is connected to the power input as well as to the switch relay output. So it will glow red when it's on, which you can probably barely see. And when you then push the button and activate it, it will glow red and green which you can see fairly well from the top, but not so well from the bottom here. So I'll just put the lid on here and it closes down like this. Then I can turn it on and you can see the red lid is glowing. Then you push the button, you can hear it clicking on and you can see the green light and as well as the UV leaking out here. So after a while, it will switch itself off again. There it is, just clicked off. And now we would be done exposing the circuit board. And then we'd open it up after we unplugged it, which I just did. And there we have it. The only thing that's missing at the moment is the plastic cover that goes on here which I already have but I took off to demonstrate this and uh, to show you how it's connected. You'll also note that I changed the button here because uh, unfortunately I put in this one and this is a latching button which is a bit useless for this application. Um, so to adjust this potentiometer there's a hole in the plastic cover that goes over here and I'll print a knob that go, protrudes through the hole and goes on top of this, like a, on top of this shaft. Um, you could also use a non-conductive screwdriver to adjust that through the hole, which would also be fine, but I think with the knob it's just a little bit more comfortable. So yeah, this is the whole thing. And in the next episode, we will use this and spin coater to make us some double-sided circuit boards. I will see you on the next one.